thing based on uh, your post that you've made last night. Thank you, Hans. Thanks for having me, Herbert. This is definitely a big day and I uh, can't wait to get into the details. Yeah, this is so big and I, I just don't know if people are really grasping, grokking how important this is last night. So let's just uh, set the stage here. Uh, Elon and his XAI team pre presented last night Grok3. They launched it. You can play with it right now. So if you're an X account in your Premium Plus, you can download and play with Grok3 at this point. It will be available uh, on the app by itself and on the website, grok.com. And they did a kind of like a 45 minute, one hour demo of the tool. The slide here at the back, I wanted to start with that. How quickly you can see here that Grok started just at 2023 and it was just skyrocketed to the top. And there was a reason why, right? It's because of the largest supercomputer. Every other LLM is built on smaller compute power. Um, and of course, there's a lot of other things around that as well. So let's go and play a clip here of what happened uh, last night. Of last year, Elon decided that really the only way for XAI to succeed, for XAI to build the best AI out there is to build our own data center. We didn't have a lot of time but because we wanted to give you Grok free as quickly as possible. So really, we realized we have to build the data center in about four months. And it turned out it took us 122 days to get the first 100K GPUs up and running. And that was a monumental effort to be able to do that. It's, we believe it's the biggest fully connected H100 cluster of its kind. And we didn't just stop there. We actually decided that we need to double the size of the cluster pretty much immediately if we want to build uh, the kind of AI that we want to build. So we then had another phase, which we haven't talked about publicly yet. So this is the first time that we're talking about this, mm -hmm. where we doubled the capacity of the data center yet again. And that one only took us 92 days. We've been able to use all of these GPUs, use all of this compute to improve Grok in the meantime. And basically today we're going to present you the results of that, the, the fruits that came from that. That's yeah, so all the paths, all the roads leads to Grok 3. 10x more compute. More than 10x, really. Yeah, really. Maybe 15x-ish. Yep, mm -hmm. compared to our previous generation model. And Grok 3 finished the pre-training early January. And we started, you know, the model is still currently training, actually. This is a little preview of our benchmark numbers. So we evaluated Grok 3 on three different categories, on general mathematical reasoning, on general knowledge about STEM and science, and then also on computer science, coding. Amy, uh, American Invitational Math Examination, hosts it once a year. Uh, and if we evaluate the model performance, we can see that the Grok3 across the board is in a league of its own. Even its little brother, Grok3 Mini, is reaching the frontier across all the other competitors. You would say at this point, all these benchmarks you're just evaluating the memorization of the textbooks, memorization of the GitHub repos. How about the real-time usefulness? How about we actually use those models in our product? But what we did instead is we actually kicked off a blind test of our Grok3 model, codenamed Chocolate. It's pretty hot. Yeah, hot chocolate. <laughs> and we've been running on this platform called Chatbot Arena for two weeks. I think the entire X platform at some point speculated this might be the next generation of AI coming your way. How this whole chatbot arena works is that it strip away the entire product surface, right? It's just raw comparison of the engine of those AGIs, the language models themselves, and place the interface where the user will submit one single query, and you get to show two responses. You don't know which model they come from, and in the end, you make the vote. So in this blind test, Grok3, an early version of Grok3, already reached 1,400. No other models has reached an ELO score had to have comparison to all the other models at this score. And it's not just one single category. It's 1,400 aggregated across all the categories in chatbot capabilities, instruction following, coding. So it's number one across the board in this blind test. And it's, it's still climbing. So we actually have to keep updating it. So it's, it's 14, 1,400, about 1,400 and climbing. Yeah. And in fact, we have a version of the model that we think is already much better than the one that we tested here. Yeah. We'll see how far it gets. Yeah. Uh, but that's the one that we're working on. We're talking about today. Yeah, so actually one thing, if you're, if you're, if you're using Grok3, you, I think you may notice improvements almost every day um, because we're, we're continuously improving the model. So literally, even in, within 24 hours, you'll see improvements. Yep. But we believe here at XAI, getting the best pre-training model is not enough. That's not enough to build the best AI. 
And the best AI need to think like a human. Need to contemplate about all the possible solutions, self-critique, verify all the solutions, backtrack, and also think from the first principle. That's a very important capability. So we believe that as we take the best pre-trained model and continue training it with reinforcement learning, it will elicit the additional reasoning capabilities that allows the model to become so much better and scale not just in the training time, but actually in the test time as well. Oh, okay, wow. So they did actually do some demos. Hans, can you explain what they said there and why this is uh, possibly a really big deal? So one of the things that this really shows is that we have tested for the first time since really GPT-4 whether or not scaling laws would hold. And scaling laws mean that, you know, if you have a bigger unified compute cluster to do training with, that you can pre-train a better base model for the LLM. And this is kind of what we're going to get into. Um, and it, it just shows that we are only at the beginning of what AI is going to be capable of. And it shows that XAI's team um, is in really an incredible position. Their ability to get this compute cluster up and running is insane. We've talked about that here on this channel. Uh, <laughs> like no other company, not OpenAI, not Microsoft, not Amazon, not Google. Uh, you know, Google does have great training resources, but no one has managed to link together a training cluster of this size, at least not of NVIDIA hardware. So, you know, the one dark horse is it, it is kind of hard to know what Google has been able to network with their custom TPUs, but they don't really share that data. Um, since it's a completely different architecture, it's hard to know what they have up their sleeve. Um, but the results here kind of speak for themselves as far as the, <clears throat> the, evaluation scores on all these tests and the really the important graph that you had there on the screen was you know where it showed open ai and they had a a slope that looked like this which you know that slope is the speed at which they're making their models better and then you see grok is just like rocketing up um and if xai keeps up that speed and OpenAI doesn't significantly accelerate. You know, they were in a comfortable enough spot that they felt like they had some room to really try and uh, work on safety and work on trying to achieve some regulatory capture and, you know, kind of mess around because they were ahead so far. And XAI has taken their uh, slowness and while no one else has been able to catch up to them, uh, XAI has caught up and then some. We'll see once X or uh, OpenAI is willing to fully release their O3 model and put it up against the Grok 3 in all of the LMSYS benchmarks and all of these other. So some of these benchmarks that they're showing here, we do know that O3 has surpassed the scores 